or the organizers asked me to introduce the session on CLP GHS and uh, supply chain communication. So I chose to focus a bit on CLP and, and GHS. So what I put on the slide is that GHS, all right, GHS, um, the marathon of harmonization continues. So what I think we're going to discuss in the sessions is a lot of the implications and the consequences of working on GHS, working on CLP. And like a marathon or like uh, cycling or uh, climbing a mountain, it's when you look forward, there is always a massive amount of work ahead and there is always a lot of problems ahead. If you look backwards, we've come from a very, very long way. And in a way, there is a lot of improvement going on if you look at it from a more ma macro uh, scale. Now, when it comes to the CLP itself, again, there is a purpose. So the purpose of the regulation is to ensure a high level of the protection of human health and the environment. So that is why it's all for. Within the CLP regulation, and that's also where, where my personal interest most is, in all honesty, is a lot about the classification. Now, classification as such is purely hazard-based. So it's, in that sense, not necessarily uh, related to exposure or risks. But the implications of having CLP classifications in Europe with all the downstream uh, regulation uh, attached to it, but also with the direct consequences of people understanding what the risk of a chemical is, the potential hazard of a uh, chemical is, and then doing their own uh, um, assessment on how to best mitigate the risks. So from that point of view, I believe that the CLP regulation and implementation is one of the most powerful tools at the moment we have in risk management of chemicals. Thank you.